Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. I am Mansurul Haq, a journalist from Bangladesh and a former president of the club, going to MC today's event. And we had a very interesting event today. I was talking to our guest speakers that many of us, we are aware of banana republics. The banana republic is Central America and sometimes South America, where United Fruits controlled everything over there and so many upheavals. And suddenly, Banana Republics is in Asia, that is. And here in Banana Republics, it's not United Fruits, it's Sumitomo Fruits, Japanese company controlling that and practicing and following the same practice as it was in those banana republics which are still, is still being practiced over there. And our two speakers today will be talking about that their plight, fight against the uh, company and violation of their rights. And they have been uh, sacked from the company, it's almost seven months. That is because they were organizing the union. And obviously company doesn't want, company wants its all workers to be they, 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 should, they should follow their rules and others, and they were sacked. And for the last seven months, they're continuing their struggle, going to the court and also to, the, to, to appealing to di different bodies and trying to survive through the support of their friends and others, uh, their friends and acquaintances and, and, and supporters. So two speakers today, there is, um, next to me is Mr. Paul John Dizon. He's president of Nama Fusa. It's Nama the Sufa. Nama Sufa. It's the, it's the union of uh, banana workers. Yes, and and since 2017, he's the president, and and, and he's working for for five years. He has been working for uh, this this Sumi Fru, that is Sumi Fru Philippine, and his parents and brothers also work for the company. And his mother has been um, a, a slicer for 17 years. So it's the family, whole, whole family is in, in the same, same profession working there. And suddenly they, he has been sacked and, and now is trying to, uh, the, 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 this protesting against that and, and taking different measures. But still, there is no way moving forward. And next to Mr. Dizon is Ms. Jamila Seno. Seno. She's also a plantation worker and working for this Sumifru for 10 years, last 10 years. And she is one of the board directors of Namasufa, that is the trade union. And she was, initially it was not sure whether she'll be allowed to come here or not, but fortunately she was, she could make it here. So she'll also be speaking about the plight of, 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 of these plantation workers and, and the current situation over there. So, ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to two of our speakers who will be who are guest speakers today. And extreme right is our interpreter. She will be interpreting because because Miss Seno will be speaking in in Tagalog, and Mr. Dizon will be speaking in English. So, first day, uh, I invite Mr. Dizon to make his presentation. Okay. So, you can yes, yes, I can see too. So, um, first of all, thank you so much for um, all the medias that are here in um, Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan. And we are very thankful to um, speak uh, f um, from our co-workers in um, Compostela, Compostela Valley, Philippines. So I am Paul Jan Dison, the current president of the Namasufa Naflo KMU, or the labor, and, uh, labor trade union under the Sumifro Philippines Corporation. So first of all, um, Namasufa is consolidate, consolidated unions of eight different individual unions under Naflo KMU, or National Federation of Labor Unions, Kilusang Mayu Uno. So we are working in Compostela, Compostela Valley, in Mindanao, uh, in the Sumifro Philippines Corporation. Uh, it is a Japanese multinational company engaged in sourcing, production, shipment, 
and exporting of various fresh products, so such as Cavendish banana. So we have markets, so we from have markets in six um, different countries, so Japan, um, South Korea, uh, Singapore, China, New Zealand, and also in parts of Middle East. So, um, the struggle of the workers um, all, is all about regularization. So, it's been they, um, the average years that the workers work in Sumifro is about 3 to 19 years. And until now, we are not recognized as re regular workers. Even though we won cases in the court, um, we won the employer-employee relationship um, case in Supreme Court of the Philippines um, and until we won the case, even though we won the case, the company didn't recognize us um, as regular workers and didn't acknowledge our um, collective bargaining agreement proposal. So we are we wanted to become regular workers so that we can get all uh, the benefits that a regular worker must have. So uh, inside the packing plants, we work um hundred um we work ten to sixteen hours a day. Yes, we are paid by overtime because we want because we have a union. But uh, other than that, we didn't re uh, receive any um benefits such as. Uh, maternity leave or fraternity leave, sick leave. So, if one worker will be um, will get sick, so if he cannot go to work, so the company will not pay the worker. So sometimes workers will try to work even though they have we have many uh, that that we are suffering from diseases, so that we can raise our families. So we are receiving low wage in our company um, we only received 391 pesos as minimum wage for eight hours in in the company because it, it that is uh, the minimum wage of the region that we are in and that is why we are calling the uh, attention of the company the sumifro to take actions on the decision of the supreme court but um on october 1 2018 because the company didn't um, recognize our proposal in collective bargaining agreement, we waged the strike last October 1, 2018. So around seven packing plants, 749 workers go on strike outside the uh, company premises and protest. And we protest. We are protesting about regularization and CBA. But until such time. Um, around 11 days that we are protesting peacefully outside the company premises. We didn't know that the company Sumifru is organizing standby, uh, organizing scabs, um, organizing peoples that will strike or will destroy our strike camps. And also they, are, they have, the, um, together with them, the state forces of the Philippines, the military and the police. So that is why only 11 days we stand our strike camps and after that they destroyed everything. So many workers have been beaten, many workers have been robbed by their own belongings and also many workers suffer from um, trauma because of what happened. Um, we heard two gunshots outside the house that we um, ran to inside our house because the strikers that stri strike, struck our camps have beaten us. They are running wild. I don't know what um, they are taking. That they didn't really listen to what we are saying. That we are, we don't uh, want any um, violence. So they ran rampage on us. So that is why we forced to back uh, to our office and then we heard several gunshots, two guns shot outside our house. So after that, um, November 31, one of our workers, Danny Boy Bautista, was shot dead in Compostela, in public market, around 6 p.m. in the evening. So 
we tend um, we are saying that the company is responsible for this because uh, no uh, when we didn't rage the strike there is no other violence that is happening just like killing workers so in our country right now they are very critical on labor workers on especially on labor unions and also activists so that is why so we through we are really we file cases in commission of human rights of the philippines about the killing of danny boy bautista and also on november 11 um one of our co-workers also was skipped death um he was also shot in outside outside his house around 7 p.m but luckily he was only shot or hit in his arm and then he ran away and then report the cases to the police but the police didn't really um record what would have what happened so that is why we also file cases on chr of the philippines so because of that um we really we we are seeking help on the local government of compostela the lo lgo local government unit of the philippines or the compostela but um, we feel that um, they are not really listening to what we are saying. So, Namasufa workers only wanted regularization to all the workers of Sumifro in Compostela. And we don't really wanted to come up with a violent strike. So, it became violent because they, violent because someone have, um, attack our strike camps so because of implementation of martial law that is one of also a problem of the workers so we tried to seek the help of the national office so on november 27 from mindanao we went to um ncr in manila the capital of the philippines to register to the government and to the department of labor and employment what what has happened in compostela so around 350 workers, um, what so-called Lakbayan, or we traveled from Mindanao to Manila to register the calling for regularization and collective bargaining agreement. But luckily, uh, luckily, no. But the problem is um, the Department of Labor, the secretary, Sylvester Bellio, um, certify the case of the worker. So he certi that is one of the power of Secretary of Labor, the assumption of jurisdiction, to settle the problem, the labor dispute, into the court or the NLRC. So the problem is the NLRC decided, so they, uh, they have a decision. They are saying that first, um, the workers or the company, the company Sumifro, didn't do any unfair labor practice, even though um, refusing to bargain to the collective bargaining proposal is a refusal to bargain or an, or an unfair labor practice. Second, they are saying that the strike is illegal, even though we file notice of strike on National Conciliation Mediation Board, even though the workers followed the process in the Philippines on waging strike. They also saying that the strike is illegal, was illegal, but they said that they didn't recognize who did the illegal doings, so that is why no workers will be terminated. But uh, last, that is reinstatement of all the workers that waged the strike. So right now, we are bat battling about regularization, uh, about reinstatement, because it's been seven months since we waged the strike, and the economic problems stri strike down the workers right now. So we are co uh, we are really calling the company to reinstate the workers because it is uh, it has a decision coming from NLRC. So in our country, um, unionism is um, many are telling that unionism is terrorism. <laughs> so they are labeling us as terror terrorists because we are. I don't know what uh, what they are what are the fruit that they are telling us terrorists but for us we, being in union or unionis, unionism is not terrorism it is just a right of a worker mandated in the labor code of the Philippines and also in the labor, uh, international labor law and one of the reason why we 
seek the help of NGOs in Japan because we really wanted to um, spread what has happened in the Philippines in Mindanao, what uh, what the Sumifru company is really doing to its worker. So, and we would like to tell that um, the bananas that we produce is coming from our sweat, blood, and tears. And essentially, the, the company didn't give what is right for the workers. So we didn't really need or we didn't ask um, the company that you, you will give the workers a house, you will give the workers a car, but we always, we just asking for our f basic benefits, basic rights, and also the respect of being uh, in a union or to stop the union busting that is happening right now. So, um, so that is why we are really happy that we get this opportunity to talk uh, in front of um, different um, medias because we are really needed, um, we are really badly needed to expose the um, human rights and workers' rights violations that was done by Sumifru company. So. Yes. Um, after I forgot, on December 15, 2018, I am very sorry. So December 15, 2018, so when we are in Manila, so someone or it, we are guess, uh, we are sure that it came from the company, have burned down our house. So our house was torched down on last December 15, 2018 including the union's office and the house of our former president in Namasufa. So that incident resulted in um, displacement of my family, my parents and my siblings. So we also filed cases against Sumifro for the arson incident and also we are very sure that it is a labor dispute issue or it is involved labor dispute because um, in the history of labor union or labor organization in Compostela that is the first time that there is an arson happened the burning down of properties or the house of um, officers so um, um, okay, um, after that, um, Ms. Jamila Seno, um, one of our board of director, will, okay. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kizong. So we'll go to Q&A after the second speaker. Yes. So now Ms. Jamila Seno, she'll be speaking in Tagalog and her speech will be interpreted by the Unang-una po sa lahat, nagpapasalamat po kami dahil po uh, tinugunan niyo po yung mga uh, pangunahing problema po ng Sumipro. Then masaya po kami dahil nandito po kami sa inyong harapan. Uh, binigyan niyo po kami ng pagkakataon. Uh, for the first of all, uh, I'd like to very thank you for your all of you to give this opportunity uh, to, how do you say, so that uh, I can provide the information uh, about, the, how do you say, the experience from the Smithville corporations. Ayun po, uh, doon po sa amin sa Compostela, Bali, talagang marami po talagang nangyayari at galit na galit po ko sa Sumipro dahil po yung pamilya po namin ay nakakaranas po ng mga harassment. Unang-una po ay hindi po kami uh, masyadong naghihingi naman sa kanila ng uh, malaking sweldo yung gusto lang po namin, yung mga binipisyo na para po sa mga manggagawa ay hindi nila, hindi nila po tinupad. Then, uh, in Compostela, that where we come from, uh, many things, many bad things are happening for the, our family, like our fam harassment. And then, that uh, actually, we have been uh, just requesting the right rights. I mean, enough, how do you say, the, the right rights, but not too much request. Bilang isang babae sa loob po ng pagawaan, uh, 
marami po kaming problema doon sa loob ng pagawaan ng Sumipro. Unang-una po, uh, nakatayo po kami buong um, maga hanggang gabi at uuwi kami ng gabi at hindi po namin nakikita yung anak namin na masaya na nakikita namin dyan sa aming harapan na nag-usap-usap kasi po dahil po sa ginagawa po namin doon sa loob ng pagawaan ay napakahabang oras po. Uh, the, uh, f first of all, as a female labor, uh, we are really, really suffering the labor conditions. For example, that from dawn, uh, we need to leave the house for the job. So very, very, very early morning, we need to leave the house. And then until very late night, uh, we need to work. So that uh, when we go back to the, how do you say, the house, uh, the children, my, my child has already been sleeping. So we cannot enjoy that, uh, how do you say, the, just a family time to talk to the, our family, something like this. Kaya po, uh, na ano namin na mag-strike na lang po dahil po sa problema doon sa loob ng plantasyon ay yung sumipro ay hindi po talaga uh, nagbibigay ng tugon sa amin. Uh, yung hinihingi lang po namin ay gawin kaming isang regular sa isang banana plantation ay hanggang ngayon po ay isa lang po kaming contractual. Ako po ay 10 years na po akong nagtatrabaho sa loob ng pagawaan pero hanggang ngayon po ay contractual pa rin. So that's why we, how do you say, we launched the strike uh, since October 2018. And then that, uh, how do you say, we want the, because the Smithful Corporation hasn't shared our, how do you say, the rights, uh, hasn't, how do you say, provided uh, the benefits or the rights. And then that uh, we are still uh, the contra contractual labor, uh, not the regular labor, even though I have been working in the Sumifol for 10 years. Bilang isang babae po, kung may magbubuntis po sa amin, ay wala po kaming sick leave, wala po kaming maternity leave na matatanggap galing po sa kumpanya. Wala din po kaming medical assistant na ibibigay po ng kumpanya. Kaya kung maglilib po kami, dapat 8 months yung nasa sa pupunan po ng aming tiyan, yung bata, bago kami makalib kasi po, no work, no pay doon sa amin. Uh, for the second, as a female labor, uh, I want to share this experience. We don't have any sick leave. We don't have any maternity leave. We don't have any, how do you say, uh, medical assistance also. So our, how do you say, uh, the friend of our workers also needed to work uh, even though he, she, is, she was pregnant until eight months. Uh, so yeah, such situation also happening. Then, isa din po yung problema po namin doon ay yung uh, bilang isang babae po, uh, yung chemical na ginagamit po sa saging ng sumipro ay nakaka uh, sira po sa aming katawan. Dahil po, yung chemical na yon omega, uh, serenade, banket, yung ginagamit po para po mag makinis yung saging papunta dito, yung saging po iniingatan po namin yan. Hindi namin yan dapat magasgasan o masugatan dahil napakamahal po at magagalit po yung management at feedbacking po yun sa amin bilang isang manggagawa ng sumipro kapag nandito na po sa ibang bansa. And as a female labor, I also like to share the experience about the chemical uh, medicines that, uh, how do you say, that uh, we are using in the packing plant. Uh, those chemical medicine also actually damaged our health or our bodies. Uh, the, those chemical includes that uh, uh, in the, those, how do you say, the before, the omega, serenade, and then now uh, in the banquet. Uh, those are the name of the chemicals. Uh, those chemicals, uh, because the company say that uh, it's uh, the purpose to, how do you say, the export, the banana is really good looking. But uh, those chemicals actually really, really damage our health or our body. Yun po, ang uh, nakakasama pa dun ay mas iniingatan pa nila yung saging kaysa yung mga manggagawa na gumagawa po ng produkto na papunta po dito. Dahil po, once uh, 
Meron pong isang beses po na nalaglag yung saging. Yung sinabi, niya, yung sinabi po ng supervisor, Oops, yung saging, ingatan mo. Hindi man lang niya iningatan yung, yung tao na nalaglag na nga yung tao, yung saging pa yung talagang inaalala niya po. Para ano, malaki daw po kasi yung kinikita nun at malaki din yung ibebenta yun. Kaya kung mag-expose, ah, pag, pag malaglag yun sa ano, ah, talagang malaking damage daw at malaging kawalan sa kanila. Then, uh, like this, the, the company is actually taking care of uh, better banana than the, the workers like us. And then uh, the supervisor also said that if, how do you say, they find that the, the banana is, how do you say, the kind of damaging, the banana, uh, I mean, the, how do you say, uh, but looking of in the banana, uh, they said, oops, something like this. And then they say that uh, oh, it's a loss of the, how do you say, good uh, benefit or the, how do you call it, uh, the um, big benefits has already gone, something like this. So they really take care, take care of the good looking of the banana than the labors. Kaya yun po yung mga nangyayari doon sa aming pagawaan ng plantation ng Sumipro sa Mindanao. Kaya napilitan po kami kumasa ng strike. Kaya hanggang ngayon po uh, patuloy pa rin yung harassment dahil yung pamilya ko po, yung mama ko po, yung anak ko po ay hinaharas po ng mga militar. Uh, kahit ako po hindi na po ako makakauwi sa amin. Pasensya na po. Uh, kasi po ano, dahil hinahanap po ako ng guns. Dahil po si Sumipro ay nag, ano siya ng military para mag-surrender kami at huwag na kaming mag-union. Pero para sa akin po ay patuloy pa rin akong lumalaban dahil ang ginagawa ko po ay hindi po para sa akin, sa aking pamilya, kundi para po sa lahat ng mga mamayang Pilipino na naghihirap po sa aming bansa at hindi po regularization na pagawa. Dahil kontraktual pa rin hanggang ngayon. Kaya patuloy pa rin kaming lumalaban. Uh, so that's the how the, how do you say, the Sumifu is doing the business. Uh, so we, how do you say, we started the strike and then we also went to the Manila to uh, leash our voice to the other Filipinos. And then, but the still uh, the harassment is also happening and then continuing in the, our area. Uh, for example, the, my mother was left in the house in the Mindanao or Compostela Valley. And then, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, one time or two times, uh, the goons, uh, it seems to be hired by the Sumifuru Corporation. Uh, they came to our house and then asked the, ma my mother that uh, uh, where is uh, your daughter? It's me, actually. And then... Uh, so in these situations, I cannot go back to the house yet uh, since, uh, yeah, since we came to the Manila. Actually, goons are saying that, uh, as you say, why your daughter is uh, participating in the unions. Uh, but for me, the to participate in the union is our right. And then the, we are not the regular workers. Even after the 10 years we are working, we are still contractual. That's why we are continuing this, uh, yeah, this union's struggle. Kaya yun po, uh, kaya po ako nasasabi na galit ako sa Sumipro dahil marami pong mga manggagawa ng Sumipro doon na talagang harassment po ang paggawa nila sa amin at sinasaktan na po at Yun po, tinatakot po sa aming bahay, pinupunta-puntahan. Kaya ngayon po, andito po kami ngayon sa Maynila, naka-vase. Hanggang ngayon, patuloy pa rin yung laban. Dahil si Full Kuwig King ng Sumipro ay hindi pa po humarap sa amin hanggang ngayon. Uh, actually, I'm really angry at the Sumipro Corporations. Uh, because the harassment is continuing and then that the, they are damaging or the, yeah, threatening our family and then our friends. So uh, we are now continuing the, our struggle in the Manila, uh, but we really, really continue this struggle. Okay, ayun po yung may share ko po bilang isang babae na manggagawa na sumipro na 
uh, bilang lumalaban sa aming karapatan na pagawa, uh, sana marap na rin po si Sumipro para harapin niya po yung mga ginawa niya po sa amin dahil napakarami na po niyang ginagawa na hindi na po nakakaganda po sa amin at hanggang ngayon patuloy pa rin po ang ginagawa doon sa Inter Compostela, Compostela Valley. At marami salamat po. So, uh, that's why we are still continuing that uh, our, our struggle. And then, that's uh, Smifo is doing very, very, how do you say, uh, the, yeah, give us the bad experience. And then, uh, we are fighting uh, for the, all the labors in Compostela. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, both of our speakers today. And now the floor is open, ladies and gentlemen. Please raise your hand, and when you are identified, come forward, introduce yourself, and if you have specifically want to direct to some one of the speakers, mention that. And the floor is open now. So as, as you prepare for the question, I start with one of my questions that uh, you have filed case against uh, Sumifro, that is after the burn, burning down of office and your, your house, you filed court case. Yes. And where it stands now, court case, is, is the verdict given or still hearing going, going on? So, um, the case about um, employee-employee relationship has be has a decision last June 7, 2017. So, for regularization, because uh, Sumipro is being recognized by the court as uh, the principal employer, so Sumipro right now must recognize us as regular workers. So, until right now, that is not happening. So, also we are file cases about the cases of labor only contracting conduct, conducted by the agency and uh, contractors inside the company because they are hiring many agencies and contractors to subcontract the workers in order for the workers to they, so that they cannot um, uh, identify Sumipro as the principal employer and 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 it is also i i read in the in the notice that we have distributed that Department of Labor yes. upheld the court case yes. and asked Sumi Fru to reinstate the workers or or recognize them as as uh, full time workers. Why this company is ignoring that so, uh, request or order? Yes. So basically, um, all companies didn't really wanted a regular worker. So. Uh, if, if you are a contractual worker, so the company will always, always only pay you for low wages, no, no benefits. Um, so that is why they really prefer uh, contractual workers compared to regular workers. So that is why, that is one of the reason I think uh, for us workers, why the Sumi Pro di didn't really wanted us to be recognized as worker, as regular workers, because he will pay all um, the right benefits that a regular worker must have. So that is one of the big reason. And even defying the court uh, verdict and defying the uh, uh, order coming from the Department of Labor. Yes. Um. Um. Also, we they are telling that they appe um file a motion for reconsideration in the end bank of Sumifro. So, but basically, the case of the worker is already final and executory. So, since 2010. But, um, the company is always uh, asserting that they ha the, the labor dispute or the labor case has not been done or has not been decided yet. But we consulted many uh, lawyers from pro labor, and they are saying that the motion that the Sumifro files to the end bank of S Supreme Court is just um, delaying tactics in order for the company to cannot uh, in order for the company not to accept the regularization of the workers. The floor is open. Anyone asking question? Yes, please, gentlemen over the years. Yeah. 
please come forward and come yeah, yes over the edge introduce yourself and then ask the question Uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you for your presentation. I, 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 my, my name is Jiro Abe. I'm associate member of this uh, FCCJ and also I'm, I'm a member of Amnesty International Tokyo English Network. And this is why I'm interested in this, <coughs> this subject. Uh, is uh, Amnesty International working uh, of your, this uh, serious issue? Yes, um, I think around December, thank you so much sir, for your question. I think around Decem last, uh, December 2019, we already um, sent the problems to Amnesty International. But also the, the answer, the answer by um, writing to the Labor Secretary and also all the department that has obligations to their workers. And until that, after that, we didn't recognize any updates about uh, what ha what had happened to the letters that the Amnesty International had um, sent to the um, the um, um, government agency that has obligation to the workers. So right now, sir, we have no updates about um, what had happened to the um, letter of the Amnesty International. Yes, the quantum sound. Uh, Tokumoto, I'm freelance. And uh, first of all, uh, I sometimes buy banana at the local supermarket for my breakfast. Okay. And this morning, I checked where it came from. It was from Sumifu. Yes. And thank you for your hard working. <laughs> Uh, my question is, uh, the first question is, um, I talked with a Sumitomo official about this Sumifuru issue. And uh, he said they are responsible for marketing and sales of a banana in Japanese market. So it, they, he suggested they know very little about what is going on in the Philippines. So f how do you respond to that uh, uh, opinion of uh, Sumitomo? Sumitomo. Sumitomo. Corporation. Sumitomo. Uh, Sumifuru, sorry. Sumifuru. And second question is, uh, uh, I think that you said uh, you have been worked for Sumifuru for 10 years. And uh, could you tell me uh, if uh, the behavior of uh, Sumifuru and Sumitomo changed in the last 10 years? And can you observe any changeable behavior or a change of attitude to workers of the Japanese corporations in the, in the last 10 years? Yes, so the first question about how uh, did we try to seek uh, the attention of Sumitomo Corporation. So yes, sir, um, also fi uh, fellow NGOs here in Japan have already tried to talk with the, manage the Sumitomo Corporation. And then until right now, they refuses to talk. Um, also, we also really wanted to talk with the Sumi, uh, Sumitomo or Sumifru Japan Corporation to, to clarify things and also to end this labor dispute. Um, and also, um, in the past 10 years, one of the changes that the data that we gathered have told uh, that have said is that 51 percent is the 51 percent uh, have already owned by 49 percent so sumi through philippines right now is owned by sumitomo in just 49 percent of the total share mm -hmm. is that share and also um, in the past 10 years, they didn't hire um, individual contractors. Right now, they are doing, they are hiring cooperatives, cooperatives to become service provider or agency. So that is one of the changes that had happened in the past 10 years. And also after the, the um, after the, 
a decision of Supreme Court have arrived last June 7, 2017. Sumifro didn't, um, Sumifro also didn't give us any um, head caps such as like this. So these head caps are being issued by Sumifro uh, last uh, in the past years um, given to the workers. So it has a name by Sumifro, so we are using it and also in Aeon um, products that we have, um, we are processing. But right now, on after 2017, they didn't give us any caps that have named Sumifru. So also, all the Sumifru names that have been inside the company premises have been erased by the um, cooperatives, the agency that are um, running the the plantation or the packing plant right now because of the reason that um, they are trying to um, they are trying to tell the government that Sumi, um, Sumipro is not the principal employer so they're tra they're just uh, covering the fact that Sumifro is the owner of all the um, the owner of the production and also the owner of the the um, the packing house or the plant uh, packing plant or where the where we are uh, where the factory is um, lying right now so that uh, that are that's are the the big changes that had happened in the past ten years and um, also um, after 2018 so um, many leaders of union have uh, been so, um, that received threats, the death threats through text, through messages from cell phones. And also, um, they are being tailed by suspected goons by the company. And yes, that's, um, that is why some of the leaders have been, uh, have been moved to their houses or they move in other places to just to escape the trauma that um, many work leaders have just experienced in the past year, in 2018. Yes, please. Is it okay to move to Hi, uh, I'm Andrea Moser from Shingetsu News Agency. Uh, my question for you is that contractization is an issue with Sumifro, but moreover in the Philippines. Um, is there a growing consensus in the Philippines to come together, or is this more of an individual struggle that has been happening? So, thank you so much. Um, right now, labor centers in the Philippines are doing um, measures and methods how to fight this contractualization. So there are many, there are some federations and labor centers that last time um, have been um, in bad positions about contractualization, but right now there is a unity happening in the Philippines about fighting contractualization. That is um, pinangunahan. Pinangunahan? Um, the first? Um, that is right now being uh, one of the labor center that is calling for end of contractualization policy in the in the Philippines is the f May first movement or the Kilosang Mayu Uno, and um, in the past two years, in the past three years, I think um, labor centers have united and calling the government to stop or abolish this kind of um, policy or this kind of scheme that is really hit, um, that is really hurting um, the workers' rights for regu regularization. Yes, any more question from the floor? Anyone would like to ask? Yes, please. Oh, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. I'm from NHK, which is Japanese Public TV. Uh, I have uh, two questions. One is like, would you share your emotion or feelings that you that you have with this situation, which is 
risk your risks your life and families. And the second one is like, what do you, what would you like you, uh, what would you like to appeal to the Japanese consumers or public opinion this time? Yes. And give me 20 seconds to get back to my camera okay. position. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, for me personally, uh, being a victim of the labor dispute in our country, um, it is very unforgiv unforgivable and also undisrespectful, undisrespectful uh, towards the workers, uh, towards my uh, family. So labor dispute is labor dispute. So the company go beyond or in boxing below the belt. They hit below the belt. In um, torching or burning our house. So that's one of the biggest um, inhuman deed that the, our um, union have suffered from the company. And also one is killing um, workers. So, but NGOs and organizations are really helping workers right now. That is why we surpassed the seven month strike. Even though we have no work we survive um, and we find ways how to continue the struggle and continue the fight for regularization towards the company, Subifro. And also for the Japanese people, um, the Japanese consumers, we really calling for a boycott for the Subifro because bananas or the bananas that is produced or being sell sold by Sumi who has a blood of a worker. So many workers have been died just for fighting for regularization, increase of wage, uh, security of tenure, or um, rights benefits for the workers. So please check the label of the, uh, the Sumi Fro. And yes, we Filipinos are calling boycott for the Sumi Fro products until such time that they will resolve the issue, the labor dispute of the workers. Because we only wanted, we just follow the rules or the laws of the, our country. But uh, I don't know what, uh, what is going on inside the system of our country. Why the government doesn't recognize our rights. But still, um, we don't give that as a hindrance. We still fight for um, the, our rights, the rights of the workers. Any other question from the floor? Uh, you want, want her? Yes. Your your opinion also. Personal personal feeling and trauma. Uh, ako naman po, uh, sa akin naman po sarili ay ito pong ginagawa, po na, ginagawa ko po ay hindi po para sa akin lang sa aming pamilya. And contractualization to all people in unite country uh, because uh, kasi po uh, Doon po sa amin talaga, marami po talagang mga manggagawa na contractualization pa rin na pagawa. Mababa yung sweldo, pero yung pagkain po namin ay nagtaasan po. Niwala na po kaming uh, matira sa aming pamilya na uh, tuwing someday na papasyal-pasyal. Wala na po kasi po yung sahod po namin ay kukurampot lang po. Kaya... Sa organization naman po namin, uh, nagtulong-tulong po ang mga organization na para masustain po yung aming welga, para masustain po ang aming laban na seven months po kami nandyan sa Maynila, uh, galing Mindanao. Dahil po sa Mindanao talaga ay wala po kaming maaasahan. Dahil po, government doon ay hindi na po pumapanig sa amin. Ni media ay wala pong pinapalabas sa TV na kung ano ba talagang nangyayari sa mga manggagawa doon, kung ano ba talagang nangyari sa sumipro na mga manggagawa. Kaya umabot sa punto na pumunta kami dito sa Maynila uh, para ipahayag po sa lahat ng mga mamayang Pilipino na naghihirap na po kami doon sa Mindanao at dahil din po yun sa martial law sa Mindanao. Dahil hindi na po kami makakilos at hindi na po kami makapagwelga sa daan. Kaya dito po namin sa Maynila nilahad-lahat yung mga problema ng mga manggagawa ng Sumipro kung bakit 
uh, bakit patuloy pa rin yung mga pangharas po sa amin. Kaya po, uh, yung organization at lalong-lalo na po sa mga uh, nandito uh, na handang tumulong po sa amin, uh, yun po yung, po yung nakasustain din po sa amin sa pangaraw-araw. Kung meron din pong may bigay sa amin na tulong na pagkain, noodles, uh, kahit ano pong pagkain, ay pinaghati-hati po namin yan sa bawat pamilya na nandyan po sa strike camp. At yun po, para makasustain po yung aming laban. At tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung laban namin dahil uh, hindi po hindi po to mawawala yung problema kasi po marami po talagang mga uh, Pilipino talaga ngayon na hindi pa tinutugunan yung mga problema ng mga manggagawa po. Uh, my feelings are actually Uh, this struggle is not only for me, but uh, all the people in the Philippines who are suffering about the contractualizations. And then, uh, so the many laborers in the Philippines are already suffering the low wage. Uh, and then also, how do you say, because of the low wage, uh, we cannot also, how do you say, uh, the, buy the exact the food because the, uh, the food price is also now the high. Mm, inf inflations and then uh, yeah those are also suffering for us and uh, and then also the low wage uh, even the even we want to go out uh, with our son or the family uh, we cannot go out or the for the relaxations also uh, so that's why that we are sustaining or continuing that our fight for seven months in Manila and uh, because that uh, we don't have no we don't have hope we don't have any hope in Mindanao because the in Mindanao we are not taking care of uh, precisely and the media in the Mindanao is also not covering about our issues so that's why we really really needed to come to the Manila so that the Philippine uh, people, uh, uh, the other Philippine people can also know that uh, what's the, our difficulty in the Mindanao, where is uh, now the martial law is enforced. And yeah, so that's why we are now uh, still continuing that fight. And then, uh, but we don't have now income, we don't have the job. So how do you say, our needs uh, is coming from that, uh, how do you say, that uh, those support for the, our daily needs. And then from the donation of our friends, uh, giving that uh, kind of uh, noodles, also the rice. Those donations, we are also, how do you say, sharing uh, among our unionists. Mm -mm. Uh, and also the family, we are left in, left in the Mindanao also. Not only in Manila, we are now uh, striking, but that uh, we also needed to sustain, need to sustain our family left in Mindanao. So that's how that we are continuing the uh, the struggle. We are not allowed to do the strike in along the road in the Mindanao. So yeah, uh, that's why that we are coming to Manila and then uh, continuing to voice out. And does she has any? Appeal to Japanese consumers. Any request or demand for the Japanese? Any request for the Japanese? Ah, ang gusto ang ano po namin gusto. Ah, sana po ay na po yung mga problema ng mga manggawa na sumipro. Ah, dahil po ah matas na po yung ah yung wala kaming trabaho, seven months, at paano yung pamilya namin, uh, yun po, uh, sana humarap siya, sana din uh, yung Sumitungo Roots Corporation, sana po ay tulungan din po kami na paharapin o harapin yung mga problema doon. Dahil nahihirapan na po kami, pero dahil po sa tulong ng mga iba-ibang sektor, yung mga friends, nagpatuloy pa rin kami dahil alam namin yung ginagawa namin ay nararapat at hindi po masama. 
we really hope that uh, the Sumifil Corporation face to us because that uh, we don't have any job income for seven months. Uh, it's really, really difficult for our family and then our friends. So please, uh, we hope that uh, uh, please help us uh, so that the, how do you say, uh, the Sumifil will face uh, our, how do you say, yeah, our unions. And then, but we really also appreciate that uh, our friends to still helping our struggle. Yes. Yes, we can accommodate one more question. Anyone would like to ask? Albert, what about you? Albert Segal, a freelance. So, I mean, I understand the situation is um, obviously very bleak, and you have a lot of issue with the, um, you know, uh, hired goons, as you've put it, uh, coming after you. Um, do you see the situation uh, since it's been ongoing? Do you see the situation as escalating, or do you actually see any signs of improvement, or is it just like stonewalled? Um, so, thank you. Um, so, right now, um, the issues about um, the goons that are um, f um, tailing the workers, the leaders. Um, until right now, it is happening, and also there is no improvement about um, uh, about what uh, there is no improvement about the, um, the decreasing of the incidents. So every week we receive many complaints from our fellow workers that someone are knocking on their doors in the house. Someone is um, asking where where is this uh, worker right now? Is he or she have come home in Mindanao or, or he or she is uh, still in Manila? So even though our um, struggle or the, stri uh, the protest that we made in Manila is ongoing, also main, um, the goons that we are saying is still searching for leaders if they already go back to their home or their place in Mindanao. So, yes, um, the, the problem of the workers, for example, um, the spying or the tailing of um, the leaders is still escalating. And um, even though we all already attend or call the attention of the state forces of the Philippines. So we send letters to them about uh, the complaints that we, uh, about the issues about the red tagging and also the issue about um, house to house or finding the house of the, the union leaders. We still didn't receive any feedbacks. And also the, um, the situation in, Compostela area is worsening right now. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul Dizon and Jamila Sano. So we are approaching towards the end of our time. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, join me to applaud our speakers who has really an eye-opener eye for many of us, that an issue we didn't know. Thank you very much. And this ends the press conference here. Thank you for Thank you all, all for, for, for joining, joining this PC. Thank you very much.